I think it's like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Like we're trying to figure out a puzzle. So the cheat code to golf is... If you three putt like me or already a good golfer that just needs tips and tricks about putting, this coach might just blow your mind. He coaches a lot of the main legends like Xander Sheffley, Phil Mickelson, Max Homa, and if you watch that Netflix series, Full Swing, he coaches a bunch of those players too. Just a disclaimer, this is not a plug for that show, but Netflix, if you're watching this, definitely hit me up. Not only is he gonna do a lesson for me today, but he's gonna partner with me to try to bring me from scratch to scratch golf, the ultimate goal on this channel. So without further ado, without wasting any time, let's get into it. What's up, brother? man? It's good. It's good. Everything good? Yeah, excited. Right. So talk to me about what your struggles are. My struggles right now are three things. One is getting off the tee. Okay. Two is the mid-range shot. And three is the short game. So pretty much everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, the thing that's very evident right now is I'll get a good shot in and I'm like, oh, on the green and then end up just losing so many strokes, just hitting like a three to four putt. I, I would say that's pretty par for the course. <laughs> Beginners don't know how to control speed. They don't know how to read break. They don't know where they're aiming. They don't know where their ball's starting. They don't know if their ball's launching or rolling. They just don't know. They just go and putt. You just bought that putter off the shelf? Yeah, yeah. I went yeah. to the regular stores, like, what's the best thing? They just <laughs> handed me that club. Yeah, yeah, and it's Spider's a great putter. There's yeah. a lot of guys on tour that use it. Optically, you look at it, there's, there's white and blue and there's lines and there's dots. And that may be good for some people, but not good for other people. At some point, we need to figure all that out. Got it. You know, in terms of where to start, my thing is if you can't read, putting's luck. So if you can't determine curvature, then... Might as well gamble. Yeah, and so <laughs> if, if I can't determine curvature, how am I gonna know how hard to hit it? So once a putt has curve, the speed has to be great in order for it to go in. If you can start the ball on the line that you want and the speed is good and the line is correct, barring any acts of randomness, hopefully, you know, you can make a putt. I guess the first thing that I want to do with you is just see what you see optically. Like, I don't even have a putter in my hand. I'm just going to try and determine how much tilt is in the ground. And then from there, we'll actually let you kind of do it. Yeah. And then the second part would be like the technical side. That you know, how good. do you hold it? How do you stand? Where's the ball relative to your eyes? Where's the ball relative to your feet? The whole thing. Another thing, when you putt, do you use a line on the ball? So Xander is one of my guys. He uses a line and then he'll aim the line where he wants to hit the ball. Is that something you ever even thought of? I seen my buddies do it, yeah. but the only thing I've done is like, I'll pick like a line and then I'll just try to aim for like two feet in front there, and then that's no matter how far you are yeah it could be a 30 footer it could be a three footer yeah that's what i okay. usually do so i don't mind that at all but if that spot two feet out in front mm -hmm. is off then it's going to be exponentially off yeah. at the hole four and a half feet yeah yeah it's not very far what what do you see do you see any curve let's see here this is gonna be great. this is gonna be great. I know it's gonna be bad. I see it like, tilted like slightly like this from the right, right to, to the left. left. So it's higher bit. on the right than it is on the left. So, okay, yes, great. Slightly. And I would say that's true. We can measure it. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're out on the golf course, you gotta you gotta look at it and you gotta be like, okay, I, I can see it mm -hmm. tilting. So if you were to go through your whole pre-shot routine to make this putt. Is this where you stand when you look? Actually, yeah. I've usually been standing this far from the ball to see. Okay. And that's fine. Okay. So if you were to place this tee up by the hole for the amount of curve there is, where would you place the tee? Like if you thought it was perfectly straight, you would put it like right behind the hole. If you thought it was going to break three feet, you would put it out here. Yeah. I was going to just put it like right. Okay. Yeah. Here. Go ahead and stick it in the ground. If you go back to where we were, does that look like the correct kind of aim and starting line? For me, I think so. Okay. If I go give it enough speed. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Right now, we're just kind of trying to figure yeah. out what you see. Would that point change if you moved to the other side of the hole? Does it look like more or less curved now, or does it look the same? I'm not gonna lie to you. It kind of looks like, like it's going the other way. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I don't know that it does, but we can measure it. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, go down there. And does it feel like the ground is tilting towards you from there? 
I, I mean, this is a weird angle, but it seems like it's a little going down. Going down away. So like, kind of like the other side of the. Yeah. Okay. So this is a problem because like you're seeing a bunch of different yeah. like <laughs> things. So if you were to go to the other side and look down, what does that look like to you? Okay. So this one again, looks more like there where it's kind of like this, but okay. almost like straight, but like a little bit. Su kind of subtle. Subtle, very subtle. Okay. So you were standing here before and you kind of squatted down behind your ball. Yeah. Okay. So now come back here. Does that give you a better view of the hole and the slope? This kind of looks straight to me, it like just <laughs> doesn't look like very much curve at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that was your eyes. Mm -hmm. That was all by do using your eyes. So now I want you to stand and straddle this golf ball with your feet and tell me what you feel with your feet. It's like I'm kind of like leaning a little. Okay, so go into the middle of it. Which way are you leaning? This is like straight to me. Okay, now go by the hole. Which way are you leaning? I feel a little more on my right. Okay, close your eyes and do it. Okay, now it's kind of just even. Okay. Yeah. So back up again, go back towards the ball. Ooh. Same thing, use your feet. Um, a little, a little to the left. Slightly. Yeah, can you guys even see him kind of like leaning that way? Like physically looking at you, you're like lean, you're like the leaning tower of Pisa like that. You can like use your body as a digital level. So have you seen the guys on TV that put their hands up and they're doing all these things with their fingers? So if you watch, Max Homa was plus 12 strokes gained putting last week at Riviera. Yeah. And he uses this technique where he, he gets his feet and he matches his feet to a digital level. Okay. So he knows how many percentage, what the percentage of tilt is on the ground. And so if it's 1%, he'll hold up one finger. So he knows what 1% feels like. And it feels like 2%, he'll hold up two fingers. Uh -huh. And he holds it. And so it creates this kind of image to the side of the hole where he uses his dominant eye and he'll kind of go, oh, well that's 3%. So I should aim right here. So he uses his feet to read. He uses his eyes as well. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first started seeing him, he, he was like you, he couldn't determine curve. Because mm -hmm. this, this is probably going to curve more than what you're seeing. So an interesting way to kind of figure out whether or not you can read. So would you still put the T right there after having walked around and stood there and kind of felt like... So when I was standing here and I did feel it lean more, I feel like it's a, it is like a, lot, a little bit more than that. Okay, so go ahead and move the T. Move the T where you would want to move it. So I would want it like ah, okay. right here or like right, yeah, right there. Okay. So go back and look at it and make sure that that's exactly where you want because I'm about to hold your feet to the fire. Step back about six feet and look at that T again. Does that look pretty good? I think that looks fine. Okay. We created these plates for green reading, but people use them in block practice. So block practice is kind of doing the same thing over and over and over again. If you're working on your technique, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I think there's definitely a place for block practice, but random practice is where we see better, better results. And it's just like it sounds, you know, just kind of going all over the place. Kind of emulating like in-game situations. Yeah, correct. So if you're thinking, okay, well, my block practice, I'm gonna shoot, you know, 100 free throws. Well, that's very blocked. Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna go from these specific spots all the time. So you've read this putt. So the plate, it's gonna force you to aim where you said you wanted to aim. Yeah. Like you don't have a choice at this point. Yep. So go ahead and take your setup behind this. I'm looking at your setup. I'm looking at your technique. I'm looking at everything. So get the blade of the putter. So now like you're flush up against it. Mm -hmm. And so now these lines are parallel to that line that's there. So we know the aim is good. So we're gonna take that variable out of the equation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So go for it. Oh my God. So, so the speed was a little soft. If the speed was harder, would it have gone in? Potentially, I, I don't know, that one went left pretty. kind of curved a lot, huh? Honestly, when I was hitting it from here, I was like, man, this might be incorrect. <laughs> but yeah, it curved a lot. So incorrect, you standing over it as if you were gonna actually putt it and did all of a sudden the reed feel, so the T, I, I, I'll call the T the reed. Did the, did the reed feel like it wasn't enough? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, well grab the ball and let's try it again. And let's just adjust the speed. The stroke was actually pretty good because you got it through the gate. Yeah. Like that was actually pretty good. So now we know that the aim is gonna be pretty close. So go for it. 
So I think if you hit it a, a little, little more, harder, that could have went in. It's going to go in. So I would say that reed is probably pretty good. So yeah. one of the other things that we're going to look at with you now, do I like the way you're holding it? Not really. But I also <laughs> think the grip is not a fundamental. Okay. If the grip were a fundamental, every great player would hold it the same. Yeah. And nobody holds it the same. You've got guys that hold it like they were holding a pencil, or you've got guys that hold it like that. I mean, yeah, th I there's all that. different kinds. I think because you're a piece of clay mm -hmm. and we're going to mold you, like let's get a grip where your hands are kind of uniformed at some point, mm -hmm. and then let's get a different posture and let's align your body up differently yeah. in the second half of this Perfect. deal. Perfect. But in looking at this, You've hit two putts, right? Yeah. They were both short. That's mm -hmm. fine, whatever. They both got through the gate. So the tees, um, you can start the ball a degree or so off to the right or to the left yep. and not hit the tees. So there is room for error. Yeah. But you actually have a pretty good start line. <laughs> like, I'm not shocked because you're an <laughs> athlete. Okay. So I, you notice I'm, every time I'm lining it up, I'm putting the label on it and I'm lining it there. Yeah. Which you didn't do that. And the reason why I asked you before if you used a line on the ball, and we'll talk about that later, um, I think using a line on the ball is cheating. I think the tour should do away with the line on the ball. It's a training aid. You can't use sticks on the ground when you hit a, a shot. Let's go again and let's just try and adjust your speed literally like five inches further. So, okay. But that's the first time you hit the gate. Try it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, we have some promise. <laughs> so left tee yeah. again. If that becomes a problem when you try and increase the speed of the ball speed, do certain patterns show up? So putting, what's the goal? Obviously to make the ball in the freaking hole, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to be really good at putting, you have to control a few things. You have to control your line and you have to control your speed. Mm -hmm. And then the line has to be correct, the read. So I have other things too, like centeredness of contact is critical. That's critical in hitting a seven iron. It's critical in hitting a driver. If you were to pick one fundamental in all of golf, it could be contact. Yeah. Like I have to hit the ball in the center of the club face. If I have to control my speed and I have to control my launch and I have to control my, my roll. Well, I already talked about face angle. The path of the club is important, I think. Yeah. I think your eyes are really important because you might stand over this and go, well, that doesn't even look like it's aiming at the tee. Yeah. Like when you turn your head. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be a problem. Because <laughs> if you're sitting there and you're like, well, dude, I'm, I'm reading this like this, but I stand over and it feels like I'm aimed way to the right or aimed way to the left. Yeah. That, that's, that would be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something, that, but that's something that we can calibrate. Yep. That's something that we can go, oh, well, the reason why it, does, it feels that way is because you're standing like this or you're turning your head like that or you're, you're bent forward too much or you're standing up too tall or your eyes are over here, or your eyes are over there. I mean, that's, that's all fixable, super easy. Yeah. And the thing that's, that's kind of cool for me is I think that tee's in the right spot. Okay. And now it's your job to... <laughs> to <laughs> We've calibrated it correctly. Now I just need to execute it. We put Jerome on Front Street right now. He's like, he missed the the two tees the first time, but he's hit him the last two times. Go for it. Got it through. Good speed. Oh, let's go. Right? In essence, that's what putting is. What makes putting so hard is, so you're hitting balls on the range and you're like, oh shit, that hooked off the planet. Yep. And then the next one is like, oh my God, that's such a bad slice. But mm -hmm. I hit him kind of solid. Yeah. Well, the ball's giving you feedback. Yeah. The problem with putting, like we have a device on the ground that's telling us like where we're aimed, where it's starting, but when, you're, when there's nothing there, and you hit a putt and you miss to the right or to the left, you don't know what happened. You don't know if it curved that way. You don't know if you were aimed that way. You don't know if you were aimed perfect. If it bounced, you don't, it, there's no feedback. The only feedback we get is if it went in the hole. And yeah. that's what makes putting so difficult. So the cheat code to golf is you get from 10 feet and in, mm -hmm. you putt like a maniac. The cheat code is going from the hole backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like understand what breaking putts are, know what straight putts look like. Mm -hmm. And then if you moved off the green, you would go, oh, well, I'm over there and the hole is right here. Well, I don't want to chip the ball and hit it over here because now I have a downhill right to left breaking putt. Yep. That's kind of be harder to make than if I chipped it to where kind of David's line where it's kind of uphill and maybe inside right edge. Yep. That's an easier putt to make. So yeah. you go back to where we started from the beginning. Well, putting is line and speed. But if your line and speed is like kind of straight and uphill, like 
I don't have to worry about how hard I hit it because it's not going to go that far past the hole, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've seen people rip it like, you know, short putts, like have a longer putt for the second one, but those are beginners. That's me. <laughs> yeah, those are beginners. So I want to do another read. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So we're going to give you this putt. So right now I'm looking at this and this kind of looked like it's bending, like bending, but also kind of going declining to the left a little bit. It, it looks like it's like this. <laughs> it's just, it's flat, but yeah. it's, the, the ground is sloping this way. Yes, from, okay. yeah, from that angle. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so I want you to come over here. Is the ball higher or is the cup higher? All right, the cup's higher. So you think that's an uphill putt? Yes. Go to the other side of the hole. Oh man, okay, okay. So I mean, from this angle, the ball looks higher than the cup. So if you were to stand right there in the middle, Right here. Facing me. Yeah. Which way are you leaning? I feel like I'm leaning this way. Okay. Come on this side. I feel like I'm leaning to my right though. Do the other, do, let's go across the other side again. Okay, so both are actually leaning this way. Both are leaning this way. Yeah. Okay, we got one more thing that we're gonna do. I want you to start from about 10 feet away and at a brisk pace, mm -hmm. I want you to walk all the way to the edge of the green, pretty fast. Are you walking uphill or downhill? Walk the other way. Let me walk. Let me Pretty see. Pretty brisk. Are you walking uphill or downhill? This feels like I'm going uphill. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, now go the other sure. way. Can you feel you're walking down now? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So that's a really good way to find out which way the ground is sloping. Just walk. You can do it for break also. So stand over there and walk this way across your putt briskly. You walking up or down? For me, it's a little downhill that way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think it's like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Like we're trying to figure out a puzzle. And then, you know, hitting the putt is actually putting the puzzle together. So if I'm walking downhill, this putt is gonna roll like from left to right. fast, fast from left to right. Yeah. So when you said, I, <laughs> I need to hit this harder, I was like, oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because if the ball misses a hole, it's gonna be down there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so the softer I hit it, the more curve I have to play. So immediately I'm thinking to myself, well, it's downhill and it's curving like this. There might be a little more curve than what my eyes are telling me. Yep. But if I go back here and I look, cause now we're going to do the T placement All right. and you're trying to figure out how much is this thing really curving? Go ahead and put your T where you think the break is like right here. Okay walk around, do your like looking and double checking. All right, let's see. <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. Looks good. Feels good. It looks good. It feels good. <laughs> so, so you may have a pattern that's different on left to right putts than right to left putts. And you might have a different pattern on right to left putts uphill as opposed to right to left putts downhill. We track all this stuff. Okay. So, okay. We're gonna put this device here again. When it comes down to it at the highest level, these guys all hit the ball pretty good, but they don't all putt very well. And I think that's where kind of the biggest separator is. So here we go, holding your feet to the fire again. Okay, so, oh, you made it. <laughs> so the ball obviously started to the right because it hit the tee on the right. Started online, oh. it missed to the right, and it went how many feet past the hole? Two and a half? Almost three feet. Oh man. So if I hit a putt kind of far past the hole, yeah. the capture rate of the hole shrinks. So if I hit a putt, like kind of it's moving a little bit, Yep. and it hits the edge of the hole, it's got a greater likelihood to lip out of the hole, then hit the edge of the hole and fall in. So if you had hit a putt that's kind of slowing down when it hits the hole, well, that, I guess it's slowing down, but not slowing down fast enough Yeah. or early enough. If you hit that putt softer, it would have missed over here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you started it towards the tee. So if it's missing over here, like that tee needs to go up, up here. Yeah, exactly. This is not right. Yeah. After this one went in and it went farther and it dipped down, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. it's got to be more left and I yeah, knew yeah, yeah. instantly is going to be that. And I would say for a beginner, yeah, that's a hundred percent people don't read enough break. Mm -hmm. 
and then their strokes start to get wonky because they know the ball needs to start at a different point. Subconsciously, they do it. They'll either aim there or they'll pull it over there or they'll push it over there. That's Russell Serber. Oh. He's a pro. So we're just gonna put another tee out here. Just I'm gonna leave yours in there and I'm gonna put a new one in here. Mm -hmm. So look at the difference in where we're gonna aim this thing. I, I don't ever want to power downhill putts. Yep. Because you go like just what happened to you, you hit it to almost three feet. Yeah. Well, not even all the tour players are perfect from three feet and closer. Yeah. If your longest putt past the hole were there, yeah, you would make a thousand out of a thousand of those. Yeah, probably. Speed is always kind of anywhere from six to 12 inches past the hole, whether I'm putting uphill or downhill. Now uphill, I allowed to hit it a little harder and it not get away from me. Hitting downhill putts hard, especially from six feet, you could do it. But man, if it misses the hole, you might have the same distance coming back. And then now you're three putting from six feet. Putting's hard, man. That's the story of my life then. <laughs> on a downhill putt, I would always err on the side of reading more and hitting it softer so the ball doesn't get away from me. So now I just kind of moved it over because I was like, well, the ball missed this much low. It went that far by. Okay, I can see it went all the way over there. I'm just gonna add, you know, a little more than a cup of break and then we'll make our little adjustment and then you can go for it. Ooh, that was a so that strong. went even farther past yeah. than the other one. What are you gonna do to hit it softer? Um, go back less. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. So, for all your viewers, that's pretty freaking good, man. Think about it. You got the first two through the gate on that putt over there, and you've hit the gate once on this putt with even more curvature. So what does that tell you about your ability to control the club and the ball? Well, it tells me I have a chance. <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> Shockingly enough. No. Let's go, let's go. No, but it's, but it's actually pretty good. <laughs> and, and I mean, I, I watch tour guys that get on these plates, they freaking rip the tees. Like the ball is hitting the tees every other putt, it's hitting the tees. You have pretty good facial awareness. So going back to putting again. Okay, well, what's the most important thing? So I said line and speed. So what's the most important thing in terms of hitting the ball on its line? It's the putter face angle. Now we're cheating a little bit. We're in for sure cheating, drill, yeah. But that's okay for now. You're able to return the face where it started. That's what this is telling me, right? That's I mean, a good thing. That's a good thing. Now, as long as we're good at aiming, right? <laughs> But you've hit a left to right putt and a right to left putt. The right to left read from four and a half feet was good. Look at your first read here. Let me, let me undo this so you can see. So I always put two T's out here and I'll always leave the original one, especially for um, like a beginner. Yeah. And so if you come back here, you thought that the black T was correct. Yeah. It's not even close. But. We said, oh, well, if the ball missed over there and it went that far, then it makes sense that if it was going a little slower, then I would have to go over there. And this is how I would want you to practice your green reading. Mm -hmm. I asked Xander a long time ago, I said, if you could read 75% of your greens correct, would you take that for the rest of your life? And he's like, oh, hell yeah. 101 putting, like no stroke technique, no, no speed control, no anything, just how much is this thing gonna curve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's a huge part of your practice. And so then if I go back and you go cheat code, well, I want to go from scratch to scratch. Yeah. Right. Well, what's the fastest way for me to do that? You can't three putt a lot. <laughs> or four putt. Or four. Well, you can't ever four putt. Like I'm going to want you to categorize every putt you hit from what distance, like was it uphill? Was it downhill? Which way was it curving? And then over 20 rounds, because yeah. you're going to start playing a lot. In time, mm -hmm. you'll go, oh, shit. like on every single one of these types of putts, I do this. I miss here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every time. Yeah. And so then you can come back to me and go, well, dude, why is this happening? Like, let can, let's see what's happening when this, when I see this type of putt. 
We want to putt well from 10 feet and in. Yep. That'll help us get rid of the three putts. But then, like if I was putting from here, so now we're switching gears a little bit. So the ball makes a difference. And so I play this Chrome Soft X, which is a really good golf ball. It's like, it goes really far, but it has good feel. It's soft and it spins a lot around the green. So it's, it's a really good golf ball. And so the ball that you handed me is a top flight. And it's generally speaking, it's harder. Um, it sounds a little different. It's a little bit more clicky. Yep. And who knows, you might putt way better with this top flight than you do with a Callaway, but there's such a thing as ball fitting. Yeah. And it's not just for full swing. So one of these days, I'm gonna put you on this putting ball launch monitor called Quintic. Okay. And it is like game changer. And we'll find out what your impact ratio is and how fast the ball is coming off and what it's launching at and what it's rolling at. And is the spin axis tilting and is it going side? It's, it's like, it's kind of gnarly. Okay. <laughs> but, but we'll do that sooner rather than later because you need to know like, am I chipping my ball into the air? Cause that's gonna affect my distance control. Yeah. Right, so, okay. All right, so we're wrapping up this video, part one of this great lesson with the man, the myth, the legend. Definitely drop a like, a thousand likes, I'll jump in the lake, 10,000 likes, Derek will jump in the lake. Stay tuned, subscribe. He's gonna be on the channel a lot to help me get from scratch to scratch. I'm excited, hopefully you guys are excited. And that's it, I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>